the most important facts, stats and trivia ahead of the 2023 Austrian Grand Prix. With the sprint format in play for the second time this season, first practice and qualifying will take place on Friday, June 30th, followed by the sprint shootout and sprint on Saturday, July 1st and the Grand Prix on Sunday, July 2nd. The Driver's Verdict Jolien Palmer, former Renault F1 driver, Austria is a picturesque circuit, really undulating, which makes it nice to drive and characterful. You've got to be careful with the curbs as it's very easy to get straddling or to get over some more abrasive curbs, which can inflict a bit of damage to your car. But beyond that, it's a short and relatively simple circuit with some hidden technicalities. Turn 1 is always quicker than you think it's going to be, but braking is the order of the day for the first sector. Turn 4, a downhill braking zone, is the easiest one to mess up, so many drivers end up in the gravel there on the exit. There's overtaking a plenty in turns 3 and 4, and then the flow through the second half of the lap is really good as it just comes around so quickly. It's one of the fastest on the calendar and it really feels it at the wheel. You barely get a breath through this Grand Prix. Strategy and Setup Keys Bernie Collins, former Aston Martin F1 strategist, with Austria hosting the second sprint weekend of the season, there are several other factors, just like we saw in Azerbaijan, that drivers and teams will need to keep on top of. This is headlined by there being just one practice session to prepare for qualifying, something that will only add to the challenge for the rookies in the field. As per Canada last time out, Pirelli are bringing the softest C3, C4, and C5 compounds to the Red Bull ring where Friday's qualifying session will set the grid for Sunday's race, while Saturday again stands on its own for the sprint shootout, in which drivers must use medium tires in SQ1 and SQ2 and softs in SQ3 and sprint. The circuit itself is a very short layout, meaning things happen very quickly and all decisions need to be made faster. It can be difficult for the pit wall to send traffic information without overwhelming the drivers, who will also struggle to find a gap in qualifying. After all, 20 cars with an average lap time of 66 seconds leaves a gap of just 3.3s between each driver. Other notes on this front are that the gaps in lap time between cars during qualifying are usually very small, which can make it difficult to calculate a qualifying cutoff and know that a driver is safe in earlier sessions. As a knock-on effect in the race, the short lap distance and large number of laps, 71, means the leaders begin to catch and lap the back markers quickly. Drivers need to be wary of taking too much curb and damaging their cars, while also keeping an eye on track limits given how easy it is to dip wheels over the white lines. Last year, a whopping 16 laps were deleted in qualifying here. Changes in gradient make this even trickier, such as at turn 3, which is uphill on entry and downhill on the exit. Points to look out for in the race are the starts off the line, given that drivers cannot practice them at the end of the pit lane, only on the grid at the end of sessions and a large DRS effect with three full DRS straights that make up a significant percentage of the total lap distance. In terms of strategy, the 2022 race saw multiple stops with plenty of overtaking opportunities, as highlighted by the numbers at the start of this piece, while the generally quick lap time limits the effect of undercuts. Alongside this, the position of the track between the mountains makes the radar very difficult to read, giving teams another headache if there's weather in the area. Current form. Max Verstappen and Red Bull continued their charge at the Canadian Grand Prix as the Dutchman equaled Ayrton Senna's tally of 41 race wins and gave the Milton Keynes squad their 100th victory in F1 to date. It is an incredible run from driver and team who are now looking to go 10 races unbeaten if we include Verstappen's triumph at the 2022 season finale in Abu Dhabi. Staggeringly, going even further back, Red Bull have only been beaten once in the last 20 races. But their rivals, namely Aston Martin and Mercedes, looked closer than they have been all season at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, with their upgraded packages showing plenty of promise. While Ferrari also recovered from a tricky qualifying session to show encouraging pace on race day. It will be fascinating to see how the top four teams shape up on the much shorter Red Bull ring circuit, which brings its own set of challenges, and whether any of the competition can step up to defeat the reigning world champions on their home soil. There will also be eyes on Alpine, who have worked their way back into contention after a tough start to the campaign. While 2022 arch-rivals McLaren are looking to make a similar jump with the first phase of their significant mid-season upgrade package, and Williams will be hoping that their high-flying performance in Montreal is not a one-off. Iconic moment. It was an already unusual weekend in Austria back in 1999, which marked the first race since Michael Schumacher was sidelined by a broken leg, leaving it up to Eddie Irvine to lead Ferrari's charge and take the fight to the McLaren drivers. Having been comfortably outpaced by Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard in qualifying, the Northern Irishman was handed a gift at Turn 3 when the leading pair dramatically collided. 
Coulthard nudging his teammate into a spin to the dismay of those watching on in the McLaren garage. From there, it got worse for Coulthard, who was reeled in by Irvine and overhauled as the strategies unfolded, giving the Ferrari man a boost in his quest for the title and leaving. Coulthard to apologize as Hakkinen, that year's eventual champion, salvaged third.